When you hear the word remote, what comes to mind? Is it an electronic device that controls other electronic devices so you can stay on the couch? Or is it a place in the natural world disconnected from electronic devices that gives you the opportunity to find solace and peace? For us on this trip, the word remote means Jarbage, Nevada. On this trip, we had Chris and I in our Wranglers, Lance in his Tundra, Tim in his Disco, and Jake riding along with me. Setting out on this trip, we had no idea we'd encounter a bombing range, a saloon, a jail, and even a shredded tire. Okay, we have stopped at Bruno, Idaho to get gas, and it is windy. It is super windy. I can sleep through the cold, I can sleep through the heat. Sleeping through the wind is pretty tough, so we'll see how it goes. Finally made it to dirt. So great. We were worried that we were going to be on pavement the whole time. It was like the pavement would never end. So we finally made it. Never seen a warning quite like this one before. Warning. This road crosses this Air Force bombing range. For the next 12 miles, objects may fall from aircraft. Let's see what happens. Airing down is always that time in the trip when the group gets together and has a little bit of time to imagine what lies beyond the paved road. trying to rendezvous with our guide, Ryan, who gave us this route to follow and we're gonna hook up with him and he's got a camp spot for us tonight. So I think we'll be to camp really, really soon. Hey. Ryan found us a campsite that was out of the wind, secluded, and big enough for all of us. What are, we, what are we having for dinner, man? Tonight we're having some Cornish game hens and some roasted veggies uh, cooked over Lance's awesome burn barrel. I'm opening the Woodenville Bourbon Whiskey. Straight from Woodenville, Washington. I think this is some of the best whiskey on the market. When you haven't seen your friends in a while, sometimes it's good to just cut loose. Vegetables, some it's a cauliflower, broccoli. Yeah, I think I'm hungry. Mm -hmm. Look at the char on those game hens. Mm -hmm. Beautiful ladies. It's fun to cut loose, but when you've got a big day ahead, it's also a good idea to get some rest. What's your sleeping arrangement in this trip? Um, the old school Kelty two-person backpacking tent. Compare the, the Bivy tent to sleeping in the Jeep last time. Oh, this was like the Taj Mahal. Wait, I should say that because the Taj Mahal is like a, yeah, <laughs> it's a tomb, right? Yeah, tomb. It's a tomb. <laughs> <laughs> it is a beautiful morning this morning. And we came into this campsite, but it wasn't until this morning when the sun came up that we could actually see the canyon walls and we could see the river running through it. And it's really, really gorgeous. Did you do a breakfast? 
Lance made these breakfast burritos. And they are so good. So simple. Bacon, eggs, guacamole, salsa, and a tortilla. He's always talking about how he's not a very good cook. Cook some eggs, cook some bacon. You're a good cook. Last night when we're driving in as a group, we're all on our phones, we're texting our wives, we're taking pictures and saying, oh, look at this, we're on this great adventure together. And we progressively went from interstate, highway, paved road, graded dirt road, rough dirt road. And there's that moment when everyone loses a signal and you leave the grid. We were then disconnected from the rest of the world. We were connected as a group, moving together, but the rest of the world was not there. We didn't know where we were going. We didn't know what we were gonna see. And we we're on this adventure together moving forward. And it's just a really neat feeling. Also a little scary. But we made it to within about 13 miles of Jarbage, which is, so I've read, the most remote town in the lower 48 states. And we're gonna go look at this old mining town. I can't wait to see it in person and share that with you. So we're gonna pack up camp, we're gonna get going, and we're gonna keep this adventure rolling. That beautiful morning turned into a storm, and on our way to Jarbage, we got snow. Good to see you, man. Good to see you, brother. <laughs> where where is this? Turned off and got winter. Jarbage, Nevada. And where are we here? This is Red Dog Saloon. They have whiskey here? Gotta have whiskey. Good beer, good food, good whiskey. Best selection of liquor in Nevada. So, great people. Let's go in. Yeah, let's do it. We were the only people in the saloon that day, and maybe even the town, so we got the whole place to ourselves. I'm Jay Stinkle, owner of the Red Dog Saloon in Jarbage, Nevada. We've got a world-class selection of whiskeys, wine, schnapps, tequilas, bourbons, rums, and 35 different beers. What's with these red lanterns? The rumor is they allegedly came out of a brothel. I do know they were built between 1870 and 1910 by Duplex, and they're still in business and are made in England, and they were originally oil. And somewhere down the line, I don't know exactly when, they were converted to electric. And like, what makes this place different? It's the most remote town in the lower 48, which makes us the most remote bar in the lower 48. <laughs> and what would you say is your specialty here? Whiskey. Jace wasn't lying, they have a fantastic selection of whiskey. But what makes the Red Dog Saloon truly special is the feeling of authenticity that you get from being there that's just really hard to find on grid. had lunch, gassed up, and made one last stop on our way out of town. For, for a tour, see the trading post. For a room, see the judge. We know how to get a room at the jail now. Looks like it hasn't been used in a while. No one's been in here to take a look. But I asked, and they said it was okay that we came in here. Let's take a look inside the cell. Here's a poor fellow. He's been resting in here for too long. Can't imagine coming in here and having to stay for any amount of time. Oh yeah, this person looks even less happy than the other. So if you're a prisoner in the garbage jail, you do not have luxurious accommodations. You are cold and lonely. And in this case, you might be a skeleton. Pretty terrible place, I must say. Pretty terrible. Would not want to come here to stay. In the jail. Jarbage is, is wonderful. But it's really neat that we can come in to this town, um, have some drinks at the, at the saloon, and then come see the jail before we hit the trail again. So it was, it was a lot of fun, this stop in Jarbage. And we're about to get going. On our way to go uh, do some wheeling. Luckily, the storm passed, and we've got sunshine again and just beautiful skies. And so, really looking forward to seeing where Ryan takes us to go wheeling. We also got a quick lesson on the mythical figure that inspired the name Jarbage. There's a big people eating monster that, and so these hoodoos is what they called them. It lived up in there, and so 
there's a lot of uh, legend that goes along with it for sure. History lesson's done. Now it's time to wheel. We're riding up this ridge here. We just came to the top and there's some gorgeous views. The road's pretty muddy and snowy. If it gets too bad, we'll test out the lockers. If it gets worse than that, we've got traction boards. If it gets super bad, we'll get the winch. So right now, Jake's driving. He's <laughs> he's having a good time slinging mud right now. It's coming off everywhere. Uh, and we're just gonna keep keep going up here to this draw and see uh, see how it opens up. So we've just been following this road. It's been a ton of fun. It's a, it's a little muddy. Let me show you what I mean. We've been hitting the mud pretty good just because it's snowed recently and it's thawing out. It's gonna be a lot of, a big mess to clean up later, but it's sure a heck of a lot of fun right now. I don't know how I'm gonna get back in the Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> did we turn it around? We were thinking about it, but I'm willing to push it if you guys want me to. We did not turn around. In fact, we decided to plow fresh trail. Ryan did the heavy lifting of plowing the way with his Jeep WJ. Then, Lance hit it pretty hard in his Toyota Tundra. After that, Chris was up in his Jeep Wrangler Rubicon, didn't really have any issues. Next after him was Tim in his Disco LR3. Oh, there's momentum, there's momentum. I don't know what was going on there, that's kind of weird. We survived! Yeah. <laughs> wow, you guys, I feel like you really accomplished something. We took a sec, hydrated, and got ready to go back down the mountain, which is where Tim and his Disco LR3 ran into some trouble. Oh, She's going flat, buddy. So we're stopped here because Tim has punctured his sidewall. He runs F Falcon Wild Peaks, and this is the second time he's punctured him on the sidewall. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna get his tires changed and get out of here. I feel bad for Tim. The sidewall puncture that's really sucks. Are like, you gonna yeah. help him out? Yeah, we're giving him helpful advice. <laughs> <laughs> yep, see, when you crank it, it raises the car, and then you can take your tire. Oh, no. Usually, when you're uh, when you're jacking up your rig to change your tire. Um, usually the rig, the tire that comes up is the one that you're jacking under. Fortunately for Tim, he put the jack here and the wrong tire came off the ground. So, uh, it's, imp it's impressive that happened, but we're not, we're not quite sure how that happened. After a spring winter storm, a saloon, a jail, and a shredded tire, we decided to head back to camp and take it easy for the night. After a long day of adventuring, there's almost nothing better than a steak cooked over an open flame. So this is a cow elk steak yeah. from a cow elk that you shot hunting. Yeah, well my friend Alex shot it um, and then we packed it out. So. The, greenest, the greenest form of eating right there. <laughs> oh, and some of the most delicious too. So. We garnished the steaks with Overland X's delicious chimichurri recipe and cheesy jalapeno bread for an excellent dinner shared among friends. So I'm just uh, cleaning up, doing dishes after dinner tonight and just kind of thinking about what we might be doing tomorrow. We're gonna 
find some uh, find some more fun, do some more trails, and then uh, find some place to clean our rigs when we hit the pavement, and then beeline for home and uh, and go back to our normal lives, our connected lives, uh, for next week. <laughs> okay good morning it's uh cold we checked the temperature it's about 23 so it's not like it's like sub negative zero craziness but it's cold enough that everything froze so all the mud that we got on the jeep yesterday frozen i couldn't open the doors this morning i had to like get a rock and kind of like shiv the door handle uh, because I couldn't, it was frozen. The door handles were frozen, the hinges are frozen. Um, we've got, um, I've got the buddy heater running to thaw out some water. We're gonna make a morning fire and warm up around that while we have breakfast. For now, we're just going to get warm, get some food in our tummies, and figure out what we're gonna do for us today. That's one way to warm up in the morning. Hey, nothing says Hardcore off-road vehicle, like a pristine, clean right. jack. It's gotta be clean. <laughs> you gotta take care of your rig. So after some coffee and some time warming up around the fire, we think we have a, a rough game plan for today. So we have two major things that, we're, that are working against us. One is that Jake has to fly back to Seattle today. So we've gotta get, we gotta get him back on grid back to the airport in time for him to meet his, to, to make his flight. The second is that yesterday, Tim shredded a tire, so he has no spare. So those are the two things that we have to keep in mind today, but we'll go take some trails, find, uh, find some adventure, and have some more time together as a group before we all have to go back to our regular lives on grid. With our time constraints and Tim's tire issues, we decided to head straight for pavement, but even that drive offered us some spectacular views along the way. On this trip, we had incredible new experiences, overcame challenges, and became better friends. So the next time you think about reaching for the remote, remember this, there might be something amazing waiting for you where the pavement ends. Guys, these are mudding loafers. Yeah. Oh, yes. Did you know that? These are oh, yeah. these are these are off-road loafers. Look, they're fully waterproof right here. <laughs>